Questions 79 and 82 in the ACERT green paper. Question 79. So there are many ways that bacteria, viruses and parasites have developed to evade our immune system. And one of those ways is antigenic variation. So there are these surface molecules on each of these pathogens that our immune system uses to recognize them. And um, by varying those cell, sorry, by varying those surface molecules, these pathogens can effectively um, evade, uh, evade detection by the immune system and therefore evade destruction by the immune system. So every year we have, for example, new strains of flu um, and they have mutated such that they are um, unrecognizable to the immune system and unaffected by the antibodies that were developed for the previous years of flu. Um, but unlike the flu, trypanosomes exist outside of cells. So as such, they come into contact with the immune system much, much more. So this means that, um, as far as antigenic variation goes, they need to mutate at a much faster rate to evade the immune system, which they come into contact with much, much more. And this is so fast that uh, day 20 trypanosomes uh, will exhibit antigens on a surface that are so different from the day 3 trypanosomes that they need a new set of antibodies to recognize it. So whilst a new strain of flu comes out sort of every year-ish uh, with trypanosomes, a new strain can come out within days. And that's sort of what we've got displayed in figure one. So figure one has on its x-axis the day of plasma collection, on the y-axis the agglutination titer, and the agglutination titer is uh, the antibody level for that respective strain of uh, trypanosome. And we have a number of lines, and each of those lines corresponds to a strain of trypanosome. So um, if we take a look at the x-axis, at around day 7-ish, we have strains 3, 5, uh, three, five four, 7, and 4. And that is the level of antibodies um, being produced against each of those strains of trypanosomes at a certain point in time. So... Question 79, antibody to trypanosomes most likely appeared in rabbit blood on day. So we just have to look at the sort of earliest day of plasma collection in which antibodies uh, appear and uh, that would appear to be around day 7 where um, all of those antibodies uh, to those four strains, 3, 4, 5 and 7, seem to be appearing. So that is the day where... Um, antibodies to trypanosomes likely appeared, and therefore D is the correct answer for question 79. In question A, we're asked to find on day 15 which strain of trypanosome the rabbit had the greatest immunity against. So that's just, if we look at day 15, it's going to be the um, strain with the highest level of agglutination titer because the agglutination titer is proportional to the antibody level. So on day 15, that appears to be day 4 trypanosome. So B is the correct answer. Question 81. The reaction between day 3 trypanosomes and the plasma collected from the rabbits on progressive days from 7 to 9 inclusive increase because A, the level of rabbit plasma antigen increased. Well, that's not right because the rabbits produce antibodies, not antigens. Um, the trypanosomes exhibit antigens, but not the um, rabbit. B, the trypanosomes increasingly produced more antibody. Um, again, the trypanosomes are not the ones producing the antibodies. The rabbits are producing antibodies, so it is um, the wrong way around again. C, the level of antigen on day three trypanosome is increased. Um, or each trypanosome is going to have a constant level of antigen being expressed. So C is incorrect. And D, finally, the only answer left, um, antibody against trypanosomes increasingly appeared in the rabbit's blood. Well, we definitely know that's true as demonstrated by figure one. So um, for question 81, D is the correct answer. Question 82, according to all the evidence provided, which one of the following best explains the alternation between episodes of severe and mild symptoms of sleeping sickness? So we know that trypanosomes go through these really rapid stages of uh, antigenic variation where it's always changing its um, antigens very, very quickly. As such, numerous strains appear um, over the course of a couple of days. 
So every single time um, a new strain of trypanosomes appears, the body has to take a little bit of time to produce antibodies against that strain. So for that small window where um, a new strain has appeared and um, the body is still making uh, antibodies against that strain of, um, of trypanosomes, the trypanosomes have a little window where they can sort of thrive and really um, multiply a lot. And the severity of illness is going to be um, in proportion to the number of trypanosomes that can freely um, move around the blood. So what you get is this sort of wave effect where um, at, when a new strain of trypanosomes appears um, for a little bit, when it's uncontested by the immune system, when there are no antibodies, it's sort of um, the severity of illness goes up by quite a lot as the trypanosomes can freely replicate. But then as the antibodies come online and um, the body manages to adapt and produce antibodies against that strain of trypanosomes, well then um, the trypanosomes can no longer thrive as well and multiply, multiply as easily. So um, the severity of illness goes down as the number of trypanosomes also goes down. But then the trypanosomes sort of mutate pretty quickly. So um, a new strain appears and then the body has to again um, try and create a new set of antibodies against it. So you get this sort of wave function going where the um, severity of illness uh, waxes and wanes with the production of antibodies and the um, really rapid antigenic mutation of the trypanosomes. So therefore the correct answer is C, that the antigens of, on the trypanosomes in the rabbit's blood change from time to time um, is the reason why there is this alternation between severe and mild symptoms of sleeping sickness.